Hello our most valued student, my name is Confident, welcome to our review of the Mathematics N2 question paper and this question paper was written in August 2021. So in this particular section or lesson, I want to go through in brief, um, a, a actually um, kind of a quick review of what was in the paper. For those who have written the paper, it will give you some ideas of how you made it in the paper or if ever you will be preparing for your final exams in the next block, you can also use it to prepare for your final exams. So this review, as I said, is not going through the whole paper, but just giving a few tips there and there on how you could have approached this paper. Now, if we can begin our lesson and... Um, just before we begin uh, the part of the lesson, actually, let's go through uh, the scale of this paper. If you might ask me to say, on what level will you rate this paper? To be frank with you, I was not really, really impressed with the paper in the sense that the paper was just flat. It was dry. It had no kind of creativity to excite the learner. It was just a basic paper. Just like as if someone just went to the old papers and just took one, two, three and just made up a final exam. The thing is, this is a final exam and it must meet uh, that kind of a feel that you are from a, a, a final exam. Not that I want it to be difficult, not that I want it to be easy, but I wanted to have those kind of things whereby when students discuss, there is that one or two questions, which kind of, you know, uh, took most by surprise but at the same time those who might have gotten it also feel even very very excited about them being able to see what the examiner was trying to trick them so it didn't have that it was just a flat paper easy to get 100 percent if you were prepared thoroughly and not difficult to pass so this paper if i was to uh, rate it i would say it was a moderate paper just put it somewhere here so I will say out of a scale of, a scale of um, 0 to 10, I will put it under a moderate kind of uh, a question paper. So yes, so this was the paper that was written. As I said, it was supposed to be written on the 26th of July. And this was just a day after my, 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 my birthday. And... Um, <coughs> It, as I say, it is mathematics N2, and it was supposed to be written on this, but it was postponed and written in July. And it says uh, what is required. You need two sheets of graph paper. You, calculators may be used. That is the Casio, and I always advise a, a Casio calculator in a way because um, it helps you, uh, especially for this kind of curriculum, to simplify things. This is the calculator that I use. You can use anything on Casio. It will be more advantageous for you. You can choose any calculator, but this is what I use myself. And then the question paper consists of seven pages and a formula sheet of two pages. Now, just before I begin the paper, there are a few things that I want to make clear in advance. The first thing is, number one, this is a review, remember? It is not me going through the whole paper and giving you the solutions at this stage. It is just a review, just a quick review to say how this paper, how this question paper was. And I will touch on one or two questions in each section or between question one and the last question, just to kind of show you if you were working on those questions, how you, you would have done. Now, the second one is I will do a full paper video. So I will do a full paper video, which will follow shortly. But now this full paper video is firstly for members of uh, what do I mean by members. These are, are our membership uh, guys who are contributing monthly to the support of this channel. So because of them being our members you know we take pride in them 
we re we honor we kind of appreciate them and as a sign of our appreciation what we usually do is we will bring this video this video especially uh earlier to them they'll be the first one to go through it and they'll be able to check it because um of their support to the channel and as i said it, it takes a lot of um time some resources uh, a team for us to bring you these videos and behind the scenes there are some costs involved so these members they contribute a fraction or a, not really much uh, to say if you are considering the cost of tuition these days it is very very high i mean i mean they charge very high even at an hour but now we are bringing these videos to you guys for free so that you can be in a way learn from home you don't need to go to any person especially in this kind of COVID. you just need to be home and able to tune in into our lessons and it can give you more information that is if you are benefiting from our lessons so these members are those who are appreciating the lessons they are saying look we are benefiting from the lessons we want to also contribute to help those who are not able to attend sometimes those extra classes that they can be able to attend so the members uh, i will bring these videos to them first maybe after a month or two uh, i will be able now to bring the full video to everyone who wants to uh, i mean to have a look at it it will be also free for you guys and also this video if you want it immediately it will be available for purchase and you can find the details or you can send us a message to say where can i purchase this video if i just want to purchase it immediately but still i don't want to be a member so you will find it we do we will be selling it just at a cheap price not something expensive which will allow you to have access to this video and also just to say if ever you want to become a part of our membership you just feel free look at our website i'll put some simple steps as you can see that shows you how you can simple um become part of a member um, um, uh, i think it's as a member or a membership if you join memberships so that you can benefit from these we also as a member bring a few things time and again some exclusive content which you can benefit if you are a member so it is an advantage if ever you want to get extra things which are not made available for everyone so i will encourage you to sign up and also support this channel as we are also bringing this content for you guys just as an appreciation to say thank you for the uh, videos if ever you are benefiting from them we will also remember be bringing to you science this is uh, engineering science from n1 to n4 so if you do not want to miss on those it is also a good chance to uh, become a part of our membership so that you can have access to those and just to um again uh, appreciate my 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 members to say thank you guys everyone who's a member we fully appreciate your support your support helps to bring these videos every time so we thank you for that now let us move on to this question paper in brief i'm just gonna go through it in brief so that if you just want to look at the paper itself without going through the whole review you can just have a look at it but i'll come back to it so these were the um, instructions this was the first question question one uh question two and then uh question one was out of 15 marks question two was out of 20 marks and then you move on to question three it was out of 13 marks so if you look at question one it is mainly algebra uh it is some equations and some expressions simplification exponents logs and then question two was mainly on fractions and expressions and i will just be quick with you question two was just purely on factorization you know i looked at this paper and i discovered if you didn't have the skill of factorization this paper was going to be difficult it's uh somehow that's why i said um the the examiner wasn't very creative in this case he put a lot of questions just on factorization i think with only factorization you were able to get almost 40 percent on that because it was not only this question many other questions were relying, were relying on that and then you move on 
to question three also a mixture of steel algebra equations and expressions and then question number four it was um when you look at mensuration that's question number four uh also a couple do that by the way the graphs and then that is sketching of graphs question number five you are also looking at uh, trigonometry, also coupled with some graphs. Question, okay, that is question 5 and 5.4 was still on uh, trick there. Question 6 was also a mixture in the mensuration. And um, as you can see that, uh, it was out of, question 6 was out of 16. So in general, it was out of 100 marks. It wasn't... Uh, a difficult paper as i say you just needed to be careful with your not making errors unnecessarily the question paper comes with some formula sheet two pages as they say of formula and that is the end of the paper so let us quickly look at this uh question paper in a, a quick uh review and the first thing I always emphasize to students is you need to read the instructions instructions are very important because sometimes you might end up answering what you are not supposed to answer the first thing this is a three hour paper and it is out of a hundred marks so the mark allocation here is 100 marks and also to be quick with students they always ask where is my test or my tasks so and what is the contribution of my task because you wrote the, you wrote the tasks and you know how um, the colleges were very or the yeah the college was very or your teacher was very very strict on saying you need to have or you need to pass your task with 40 percent and above and what is my contribution what what is it contributing to my final mark of 100 percent just to be um, uh, upfront with you do not rely on the task just focus on this particular mark which is 100 percent the task in a way does not contribute anymore to your final mark it just qualifies you to sit for the exam but it does not qualify for the final mark because there is a lot of discrepancies when it comes to task you know there is a lot of questions to say how genuine are they do teachers or um, lecturers give these under uh, the correct exam conditions, especially given that there is COVID now, it's difficult to administer these under the ideal conditions. Sometimes you find that students will be having them at home if uh, ever it's supposed to be under the exam conditions. So there are different conditions that people write these tasks. So to remove that, the department in a way, though they are not clear, though they are not actually explicit to say they are not adding it, but we have seen that they don't contribute anything to your final mark just focus on the hundred percent they are saying if you ask them the system is designed in such a way that the task must be relevant to or must be relative to your final mark for example they say the task must be in the range of or the difference between the, your task and your final mark must be less than somewhere around 20 percent if i'm not mistaken meaning if you got 50 percent in your task now with that 50 percent i mean in your final exam so the, let's say this is your final exam you got 50 percent your task cannot be uh, more than for example more than 70 percent because if you get it more than 70 percent there is a 20 percent difference and they are saying this is not a true reflection of your performance some or some of the task either was easy or you managed to in a way uh, get the answers or somehow the task was not uh, of standard all those kind of things so they say the system does not consider the task so your hundred mark is what is considered so just to be um, safe ignore the task focus on passing your exam with a minimum mark of 40 percent and let everything take its course so looking at it is again uh, instructions you need to answer all the questions that is standard I read all the questions carefully number the answers according to the number is system system used in this paper this is very important start each question on a new page okay that is important if ever you are also doing ensure that 
even if there is a lot of space after finishing the first question or the, any other question yeah go to the next page uh, you can roll off and then go to the next page some they want to be safe they write p t o at the end of the paper at the bottom meaning please turn over there is more work that is following says so use black and blue pen please avoid using tipex because students love uh, presenting their work neatly if you make an error what you simply do is just scratch out with a ruler like that and then start again the question don't use markers to uh, decorate your work you know maybe you want to say uh, to indicate that this is I uh, find that a student write question 2 and they want it to look nice and presentable so they will do that and then underline to say I'm dealing with question 2 such markers are not allowed do not use any markers you'll be penalized don't use markers don't use tipex don't use any other thing except a blue a black pen or uh, I mean for your graphs you use a pencil write neatly and legible they do not talk about rounding off so in this case it's up to you you can do two decimal places or you can do three decimal places because the paper does not specify uh, the rounding off so looking at the question uh, in brief again we are saying so this was the paper and question number one you can see it says simplify the following without a calculator so you are simplifying uh, the part this is 1.1.1 it was basic one mark 1.1.2 also you're using basic laws of exponents here so that's what you were relying on and also just to um, bring this in front up front for you guys um, if ever you are struggling with the content or you want to uh, learn this curriculum mathematics n2 and you want some basics that are very important we have a test book which is the maths n2 for the underdogs now this book um is for the underdogs so what happens is uh, this book is available at take a lot you can purchase it at take a lot and um, it brings the whole curriculum of maths n2 and there is something in uh, I, I i like about this book it comes with video so every lesson in the book has a video attached to it so when you've got the videos and with the lessons what you can do is it makes it easier it's more like you have a teacher in front of you that you can use um uh time and again you know like you can pause you can continue the lessons you can uh, stop the lessons at any time come back again and continue so it's more of a simple and more um in a way convenient way of learning but you can find this book at take a lot it is not a really expensive considering the way it brings in uh the lessons the lessons are online by the way we register you to the google classroom after you purchase the book you'll be given a link that you're going to use to access the lessons through our Google Classroom. So this book helps you to have your fundamentals solid so that even if the examiners try to trick you in a way, you are not going to be uh, taken by surprise. So with that book, I've had a lot of students saying it has benefited them from um, this kind of uh, mathematics N2. And remember, it says for the underdogs because it help someone who's struggling with their maths to become an A student. So I was one of those people who used to struggle a lot with maths. So I'm writing, I wrote this book out of that perspective to say, if you are struggling, it's not because the subject is difficult. It is because of the way it is presented. And in that book, I present it in a simpler way so that you can be also easier to understand and pass your exams. All right, back to this, as I said, question 1.2 it says you need to simplify the following expression using laws of logarithms and then says show your working you see here they will be strict with your working and they put it in capital letters to say while you're using laws we don't want to in a way 
they don't want to see a calculator here though they never specified but be careful with your calculator don't use a calculator you need to show your working this is what you're supposed to uh, show the working it's four marks be careful here of errors but what you need to do is you need to test your answer with a calculator so I'm going to do this one for you when you come back and then this is another one 2.2.2 uh, again laws of logarithms uh, and then say solve for x in the following it was three mark two marks the first one okay you needed to know a few laws of exponential equations and then 1.3.2 also you just needed to know a few exponential laws but the key was in that part and realizing that this is one this is important you needed to realize that is one why because log a i mean base a of a is equal to one any number repeating like that gives you a one so that's what they were tricking you on that moving on to question number two you are supposed to simplify the uh here actually the whole question two i think the examiner here was uh in a way not um in a way unfair to say if you didn't know the skill of factorization then this question 20 marks was going to fly out at the window so factorization was what was important in everything in this part so 2.1 you needed to know how to factorize 2.1.2 you needed to know how to factorize that's why i'm saying the important of that of that mathematics and the n2 for the underdogs it helps you to get such skills because it's the fundamentals it gives you the proper foundation and i use the product sum method for such and then question 2.2 again here it was dealing with um you see factorize completely and then after that you needed to know the hcf and the lcm but the first part is to factorize and look at the six marks so all these 20 marks number one it was easy to get them if you knew if you know then you get them easy but if you don't know factorization you're going to be out of the game then we move on to question three in this case now question three um this is 3.1 it was a word problem uh two marks though and i think here he was somehow or she was somehow a bit stingy i'm talking to the examiner because such questions they can get good marks at least four provided considering the way he put a lot of marks on that factorization so he says a man deducted three from five times his age and got his mother's age if his grandmother is 97 years old how old is the man you know formulating the equation it's one mark uh, and then after formulating the equation uh, the next thing is solving the equation is one mark and finding the final answer is one mark. a minimum of three marks was expected from that but anyway that is that two marks and then the next one says given this so for n the equation using the quadratic formula here they wanted to test your skill of the quadratic formula and the 3.3 it was about making v the subject of the formula and substituting for v so that you can uh, get the value there which was also four marks in total and question 3.4 we are given this uh, that and that says solve for p and q i'll give this one at least a star in a way i when i was working on this one it's still basic but it kind of uh kind of uh, initially i made an error because when i tested my answers i couldn't find p i couldn't find q correctly so i don't know where how it was formulated but in a way it needed you to be extra careful in this part the way they they structured um they are p and q i'll say this one deserves at least two or two and a half uh, points in terms of difficulty and then question number four it says um a coffee shop intends to sell uh to start selling cappuccino in a conical shaped disposable cup with a perpendicular height of that okay so they gave you this all information so now they wanted you to find the base 
uh, radius of the cup, the slant height, and the surface area of, if the cup is a circular lead. So this was all based on the formula sheet. And you needed to go to your formula sheet and look at all these because if you go back, if you go to the formula sheet, you're looking at a uh, where is that right conical flask. So you are supposed just to go to your formulas and be able to apply the formulas. So you are given that and you're supposed to apply given the volume and given the surface area. So it wasn't anything difficult. It was just based on you knowing your formulas and then taking advantage of that. Question 4.2, um, it was on graphs. As you can see, the first one, I will say also this one, I'll give it a two star to say students usually struggle with uh, the graphs like this. And this is a parabola. Parabola. Now, students struggle here not because um, they don't know the paper, but because somehow, somehow they don't get enough practice on this, especially when it comes to answering questions like that, the y-intercept. The x-intercept, the equation of the axis of symmetry, the y-coordinate of the function. Now sketching the graph itself, which is 5 marks. You see that? And then they say draw the graph on that. They are also giving further the question. Read from the graph on that. It was 20 marks. And on this one, I will say indeed it is a question that um, was well structured. It's still basic. I'll give it a 3 to say when you are studying just take time to go through such questions and uh, it will assist you in ensuring that these become your full 20 marks question five again was on trig but also it had graph sketching so there we are you are given that graph and in the um, lessons i show you how to use your calculator to simply draw the graph so that you get these five marks and then the interpretation is also important question 5.2 was basic you have to convert that you can use a calculator uh, i says given 10 that calculate sine theta you see question 5.3 was also kind of basic they were not specific uh either you can use calculator which will be correct or you can use uh, you can solve it without a calculator but the two marks shows that even if you didn't use a calculator this was correct and then moving on to 5.4 uh, question 5.4 was I think it was on the theorem of Pythagoras because you're given that to say 5.4 given this triangle and then it says 5.4.1 the value of ac and ac actually it was not pythagoras we are using Sokatoya at this stage Sokatoya. those who remember you know what is Sokatoya? sine is opposite of hypotenuse cos is adjacent of hypotenuse tan is opposite of adjacent you are using Sokatoya number one to get that two marks and the value of ab it's up to you again you could have used Sokatoya to get that or trig the value of cos squared c now cos squared c again you are using Sokatoya for that now the whole of question 5 or 16 marks and lastly it was question number six again a basic conversion and then here 6.2 was based on the sector of a circle and again it depends on the formulas you needed to go to the formula page and look at the part that deals with sector of a circle and I think it's here so this is what deals with the sector of a circle it is very very basic so you're supposed to use that for the sector and you can see it deals also with the area so this question was saying the angle subtended. So you're using that formula and the area, you see that. So you're relying on that formula. 6.3, again, a wheel with a peripheral velocity. 
and then uh, after that one they were asking you to calculate now the revolutions per minute the diameter of the wheel radius of the wheel again you were relying on these formulas and it was also basic again nothing difficult you just needed to know how to use your formulas and question 6.4 it was uh determine the length length of the major segment of a circle which has a radius of that and that 6.4 this was four marks and again based on your um, formulas so you can see the whole of question six was relying on your formulas and the measure and the minor segment you are supposed to use this formula and this explains what is what so if you gotten these you are supposed to be able to use that and then lastly you were so that was four marks and lastly you were looking at um the mid ordinate rule it says use the mid ordinate rule to calculate the area of an irregular figure and they gave you this information and it was three marks and again the mid ordinate rule if you look at the formulas it's given here it depends how you want to approach it but there are two formulas to solve for the mid ordinate rule and this is what you're supposed to use so in total this is you say it is 100 marks now was it difficult i'll say no uh it was in the difficult paper basic standard much easier in a way if you are prepared properly for your final exam and that is why i'm saying uh the examiner just didn't have enough time to dedicate to, for this section now let me look at a few of these i'll just select one in each section just to show you how you would have solved this for example i'm looking at question 1.2 and 1.2.1 it's four marks and i want to look at these logs so they say simplify the following using laws of logarithms show you're working if you just did this in a way you use the calculator and you start um writing as like that to say minus log base 6 of 9 minus log base 6 of 40 if you just did this and then you say the answer is minus 2 so you are trying to work however you work and then but your final answer you write minus 2 like that and they said show you're working you are not going to get much maybe one mark but they might not even have given you any mark just that they said don't use a calculator so in this case you can escape that it was only in question one that they emphasized but question two one point two they didn't so you might have gotten a mark but the main thing that they wanted you to do here was to solve this without the use of a calculator so how do you get that negative two so what you needed to do was um see the same base is base six so and the negative using laws of logarithms the first law is when you are adding log in base uh let me use in base m of n plus log again in base m uh let me not use m let me use a x log in base a of x plus log in base a of y that's the first law is equal to log in base a because of the addition you multiply which is x times y so remember that secondly if you're given log in base a of x minus log in base a of y because of the minus here what you do is you divide which is log in base a of x over y so that is that part so first things first look at these two you have got a negative here and you have a negative here you can do it in parts start with the first one so start with this part and use this particular law here to say log in base 6 I mean base 6 of 10 minus log base 6 of 9 
minus log base 6 of 40 is equal to, as I said, you're starting with the first two, which is log base 6 of 10 over 9. Are you getting that? And then minus log base 6 of 40. Then you continue, which is equal to, and then what you have, you have again log base 6 of now 10 over 9 can be simplified you say 10 over 9 now this next minus that you are having it will be again over uh, we have got two now divisions which is again over 40 and then this will be log if you now your trick is to how to solve that which is log in this case it's 10 over 9 divided by 40 in basics which is equal to log in basics of 10 over 9 times 1 over 40 are you seeing that and then which is equal to log in basics now 10 times 1 which is 10 over 9 times 40 you just do that and then you cancel out that 10 so you see 9 times 4 which is log in basics of 1 over 36 now what is 36 it is 6 squared which is log in basics of 1 over 6 squared now you need to use uh, exponents to take this to the top and when you do that it will give you uh, now log in basics of 6 to the power negative 2 remember exponents when you take uh, this positive 2 to the top it becomes negative 2 and then there is a law of exponents which says if you're given log in base a of b to the power of m if this is a power you can drop it down there to say m log a of b secondly if you are given log in base a of a if a and a are matching like that this is equal to 1 so what we have here this two drops down like that to say minus two log base six of six look at that one then it becomes minus two multiplied by one hence the answer was negative two so that's what basically uh, was the way here as i was showing you it 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 was actually the um, let me not remove uh, the other part what I'm trying to bring here is that it was mainly your normal addition, I mean, uh, multiplication and division that was here tested. But what I prefer, when you're given such, you can actually do it like this to say log base 6 of 10 minus, factorize the minus first. When you took out the minus in the 2, what happens in the brackets, you have got log base 6 of 9 plus log base 6 of 40 so you see you only have to deal with the negative ones like that remember when i take the negative here and i take the negative here it will take you to the top so that is why i'm saying take out the negative so that you have got log base 6 of 10 minus you apply the first law here which uses the plus so there is our plus so our first law there says you must say log in basics of 9 times 4 say that then which is equal to log basics of 10 now the minus means you divide 9 times 4 so you say that that is the way um, 9 times 40 not, not 4 9 times 40 then it becomes like what we have previously which was equal to log in base 6 of 1 over 36 and then it leads on to what we did to say it was 6 squared and then it became minus 2 so this was just another way of just showing you that so that was that and these were 5 marks these were 5 marks and um, maybe let me just show you this 2.2 .2 here which was having uh, all these marks 
you know it was quite quite a lot of marks and i think you could have done way way better to get all those i think it's 10 marks for the lcm now it says given 6 minus a minus a squared minus 7 a squared plus 63 and they're given that it says factorize each expression completely so let's start with the first one we are given 6 minus a minus a squared so you need to write the way you are used to start with the highest power which is negative a squared followed by that which is negative a there is a plus there so it's plus six which is so that is equal to see that's what you needed to do and i i use the product sum method so my product in this case is the first and the last when i multiply them i get minus 6a squared all right or just to avoid unnecessary um, negative there I can actually take out a negative like this because it is disturbing this negative where there is a squared so that you just turn it into a positive whereby I have got a, you just interchange the sign I've got a squared where it's negative I've got a positive where it's positive i've got a negative see what i've done this negative i've taken it out but if you take it in this will become a negative this will become a negative negative and negative that will become a positive so you see i chose to take out the negative from there this will be important you'll see what i mean you can actually write it as minus one if you want but just taking out the negative means you interchange the signs but there is a hidden one there then the first and the last here this becomes your product so my product is equal to 6 times minus a is minus 6a squared and your sum is that center like that this is your sum so my s is equal to positive a which is 1a so now i'm looking for factors and it's the factors of the product in other words the factors of 6 it's 1 times 6 it's 2 times 3 these are the factors of 6 but in those factors I'm looking for two numbers when I add them which is my sum they must give me a 1 so from these two numbers when I add them you see I cannot add 1 plus 6 to get a 1 but I can add uh, 2 and 3 in this case I'm not gonna add them and say 2 plus 3 no but if I say uh, minus 2 plus 3 it will give me a 1 you can test that uh, with a calculator you will, see, you will see that it gives me a 1 when I'm adding that so if I say negative 2 plus 3 you can see it's a 1 but now here you put an a there you put an a so how you write it now you write this expression in terms of minus 1 put that bracket which is a squared where there is plus a you write your new two numbers which is minus 2a plus 3a remember this is now your 1a and then minus 6 I think that which is equal to minus 1 now consider the first two what is common it's a that is common there So a into a squared is a minus a into 2a is a minus 2. We must get a similar bracket. What is common in 3a and 6 is plus 3. So a into 3a is a. a into negative 6 is negative 2. So you can see that we have got similar brackets, which is what you are looking for. So it is minus 1. Now writing the first bracket, which is a minus 2. And the other bracket is a plus 3 so that is the first part that we have uh, to say when you're factorizing this one becomes uh, minus 1 uh, a minus 2 and a plus 3 so that is the first one that we have just to take off this other part so that's the first one that we have now 
we move on to the other one to factorize i'm just uh, writing that we've got minus 7a squared plus 63 you see again it's a dilemma we are given a negative there so you can take out that negative first but now 7 and 63 you can take out 7 there now minus 7 into a squared minus 7 a squared a will remain with the squared there and then the negative will make this interchange positive to become a negative now 7 into 63 is 9 you needed to do that because this is a difference of two squares which, which was hidden it's a squared minus 9 is 3 squared so it's minus 7 you open two brackets the first one is a minus 3 the other one is a plus 3 so that is that part which is negative 7 a minus 3 and a plus 3 and lastly you use the other the last one which is 6b minus 3c plus 2ab minus ac now what the examiner was clever here is they wanted you to be careful this is grouping because there are four items as you can see one two three four so you needed to factorize by by grouping in, in this case so for you to be able to do this you needed to reshuffle it for example bring the b together so that you have got 6b plus 2ab minus 3c minus ac you see i just reshuffled look at the first two what's common the first one the numbers it's two and there is a b there is a b there now two into six is three the b and the b will cancel plus two into two is one the b and the b will cancel to remain with an a so it's three plus a now plus always take out a, a positive first you can see it's only c that is common because three and there is a one there so there is no common number there so you take out a c take out a plus at first now c into negative 3c is minus 3 and then c into negative ac the c cancel the c is minus a now you can see that this in a way is the same is 3 plus a is minus 3 minus a is only the signs which is 2b 3 plus a then you interchange the signs in other words you are taking a negative this was positive becomes negative c inside also you change it what is negative becomes positive what was negative also becomes positive so this you can say 2b if you start with a it's a plus 3 minus c and it's a plus 3 so the brackets are the same which is a plus 3 outside the brackets it's 2b minus c so this becomes a plus 3 and 2b minus c so as i said this whole section just think of it um these five marks you are all doing the same thing here product sum here factorizing uh probably um you're just factorizing taking out the common here product sum 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 so you see it was full of factorization if your factorization was challenged then you had an issue now having done this got in your six marks now 2.2.2 says determine the highest common factor is one mark now the highest common factor meaning look at all what we have here and ask yourself which one is repeating in all the three so if you check it carefully you have got a plus three a plus three a plus three now the fact that it repeats in all the three expressions that becomes your hcf so here when they say hcf it was a plus three it's one mark and then the other one lastly is determine the lowest common multiple of the three expressions 
Now, when they say the law is common multiple, you take each and every item here. For example, on the numbers, I have minus 1 and minus 7. So the first thing is negative sign. Between 1 and 7, you take 7 because 1 is just 1. Then you move on to the next. You are done with the numbers. The first one is a minus 2. You write it a minus 2. If it has got the highest square, you write the one with the highest square. And then the next one is a plus 3. You write it down, a plus 3. You move on to the next one. You are done with minus 7. A minus 3 is another one. So you write, you don't have to repeat them, you write them once. It's A minus 3, then it's A plus 3, but I've already done A plus 3. And then the other, the last one, A plus 3 is already there. And then there is 2B minus C, which is not yet there, 2B minus C. Then this becomes, in this case, your LCM. So you are writing each and every item that is not repeating then this becomes your LCM, hence they give it in a way more marks than the others. So that is how guys you have done this question. Difficult? No. 10 marks, easy to pocket them, but you need to practice. And then the other question they were bringing here is question three. Um, it was a few questions there, but maybe in a quick way, let me try to look at this one. 3.4 is a simultaneous equation, which is 8p minus 1 is called to minus 2q, and 2p plus 3q is called to 4. Then they say solve for p and q. So what we have is 8p minus 1 is equal to uh, negative 2q so the thing I'm going to do is to take this to join q so I'll have 8p plus 2q now the one which is negative also let it go that side to become a positive one so this was my first equation that I needed to have so when I'm writing and looking at the second one is already arranged properly so I have this equation which is 8p all right plus 2q is equal to 1 my equation 1 and I have 2p plus 3q is equal to 4 and that is my equation 2 so now what I needed to do was to eliminate uh, or solve its different ways of solving simultaneous equations I cover it in the book but now I'm just going to use this uh, the first one that I use which is called the elimination method so how do I eliminate if I want to focus on P to eliminate P I can multiply this equation by 1 and multiply this equation uh, 2 into 8 is 4 so if I multiply the first equation it will give me by 1 it remains as is 8p plus 2q is equal to 1 get that now multiply each and every item by 4 now 2 times 4 it's 8p see what I'm doing there 4 times 3 it's 12 Q 4 times 4 is equal to 16 then from there I'm going to subtract 8p minus 8p so you have 8p minus 8p so that is it gives you a 0 and then you say you have got plus 2q minus 12q is equal to 1 minus 16 do you see what I'm having there then from there 2q minus 12q it is minus 10q is equal to and then I've got 1 minus 16 is minus uh, 15 in this case divide by negative 10 divide by negative 10 so what I have here on Q is equal to so when I've um, so for that um, 
it will then give me if I do that just a moment I'll be having negative 15 over negative 10 it gives me 3 over 2 so that is my Q now I can choose any other equation for example let me choose this equation to find in a way um, my P remember I've got my Q now so this equation was 2P plus 3Q is equal to 4 but I have my Q now so it's 2P plus 3 and my Q is 3 over 2 is equal to 4 and then if I have this is 2P plus 3 that is 9 over 2 is equal to 4 now if I take this to join the side I have 2P is equal to 4 minus 9 over 2 so my 2P in this case if I um, work it out it will give me uh, just to check is 3 and 3 over 2 just to confirm it's 9 over 4 um, that I need to have it like that so it's 9 over 2 so it's what I have now is 4 minus 9 over 2 it gives me negative half so I've got minus 1 over 2 now I have to divide by 2 divide by 2 and when you use a calculator then you're going to have P is equal to negative 1 over 4 so this is what I have on my P and my Q so my P here if I erase some things here just to test it now my P remember where there is a P I have got minus 1 over 4 where there is a Q I have got uh, 3 over 2 so let's test it so if I say 8 P minus 1 over 4 minus 1 is equal to minus 2 Q is 3 over 2 now if you multiply that you give it 2 so it's minus 2 minus 1 here minus 2 minus 1 is equal to the 2 cancels the 2 to get a negative 3 so minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3 is equal to minus 3 so the first one does well let's try the other one it's 2 my p is negative 1 over 4 plus 3 my q is 3 over 2 this must give me a 4 so you cancel that it gives a 2 at the bottom so minus 1 over 2 plus 3 times 3 is 9 over 2 it must give us a 4 so the common denominator there is 2 uh, then 2 there is minus 1 plus 9 so minus 1 plus 9 it must give us a 4 minus 1 plus 9 is 8 over 2 which is a 4 so 4 is equal to 4 you can see that you can use a calculator directly from here just to say um, 2 into negative 1 over 2 all right plus 3 into uh, 3 over 2 just to see if ever it gives a 4 in that in that part actually it was negative 1 over 4 here not negative 1 over 2 there is a 4 here that we got remember P is, is 4 so you get that so that is how you would have done this not complicated but you just needed to know what to do and then question number four, as I said, relied mainly on your formulas. And um, 
I will leave that one for the revision session, question number four, which also was on graphs. And then question number five, it also wanted you to solve here, you're drawing the graph, and it's also simpler when you're using a calculator. And I will say, just check the lesson, uh, the full complete lesson when I come back to that. Question six, 5.3, it was not complicated on here. They give you 10 that you're going to say theta is arc 10. Uh, first, you get your ref angle. So it's arc 10, 8 over 15. And then when I do that, it will give me the reference angle. So if I say shift arc 10, um, 8 over 15, You see it gives me 28,072 so the angle is 28,072 degrees so that's what I have as my ref angle but they are saying there is a negative meaning 10 must be negative so when you look at where is 10 negative then they give you the range between 270 to 360 so you've got 0, 90, 180 270 and 360 so you see that they are giving it in the fourth quadrant and in the fourth quadrant is 360 minus theta so we are going to say the actual theta is 360 degrees minus 28,072 that's where the trick was then when you use uh, to calculate that to find um, the reference angle you are going to get uh, in this case 360 minus 28,072 equal to 331,928. So 331,928 degrees. That is the actual angle. So if they're saying find sine theta there, that's what they wanted you to say uh, sine. 331,928 and then you simplify that it was going to give you then to say sine 331,928 equal to then that's what you're going to get minus 0, 0,471 minus 0, 0,471 to three decimal places you can use also a different approach, but I was just trying to show you how quick this would have been. And also lastly, question six, also it was the formulas mainly. You're using the formula sheet from uh, the sector here. You're given that a circle has an arc length. So you're given that part where this is the arc length and this is the radius so and if you want to find the area so the arc length here is 15 over 2 the radius here is 21 over 2 so you're finding the the angle subtended they give you theta is arc length over radius you, this is the formula you are given so you put that over that you get the answer the area Theta is equal to one, um, I mean area, A is equal to half theta squared R, if I'm not mistaken, half R squared theta actually, it's half 1 over 2 R squared theta, but there is a formula for that, you can simply refer to that, but because of time I'm just rushing through now. And again, here you're using the formula on 6.3. And then 6.5, you are also use 6.4, you're using the formula given. I'll show you in the next block or in the next complete revision what to do there. And also question 6.5, you are using the formula for the mid ordinate rule. So guys, as I said, it was just a basic paper, which in a way did not uh, require a lot of input but thorough revision and this is what I do with you I revise with you 
for such questions so that you can be ready for your exam now guys we have come to the end of our lesson remember this was just an overview of the paper now if you have not subscribed to our channel and you want to always be notified of these videos remember to subscribe to our channel remember to share this channel with your friends and your colleagues and if you want to be a member uh, to join our membership feel free to do so we've come to the end of our lesson i hope this was of benefit to you if you wrote this exam and you think you did well congratulations we wish you all the best but if you feel like you are not really prepared for this remember there is always a second chance the exams are coming again just use these videos to prepare again for your final exams and also if ever you want those videos that i was talking about remember you can check them on our uh, purchase the book on take a lot or you can request such videos uh, we have got online uh, videos that we are also selling at a fraction of a price which you can use to benefit we've come to the end of our lesson thank you Thank you.